Hey gang, East Coast Lumberjack here, and uh, I thought I'd bring you along for a little project. So, I've mentioned before my neighbors down the road, uh, Kent and Lorraine Allen, they own a big, uh, they used to own a big dairy farm. Uh, they milked uh, Holstein there for years and years, and uh, it was their father's farm before that. And uh, he's got a beautiful wood lot, and uh, I've gotten some ash off of it. Well, he came up the other day, he mentioned here a while ago, we had a couple of, of old axes, so... So this is what come up now that looks like a Campbell's or you know it's, it, it has the old pole on it the hammer and he's started cleaning it up a little bit now there's a you can see some old uh, horseshoe nails holding on the axe head for wedges which is kind of neat I mean that, that tells you the vintage of the axe head so if they were using those kind of nails obviously it was quite a while ago and here's the other one he's cleaned up a bit so they're gonna be wall hangers and uh, there's a reunion coming up they want to handle it so I thought hey I might as well might as well film how we do this so I'm gonna do the whole process here for you and the neat thing about it is the wood that I'm gonna put in for his axe handles came from his woodlot so I got some ash here a couple years ago and you can see here on the end of it it's got his name Kent so I usually uh, I usually put where the wood came from so I have an idea you know if it's good bad whatever as I'm as I'm playing with it you know how the wood was um, so this stuff has a, a few waves in it. It wasn't perfectly straight, but it's, it's nice rugged wood. It grew along a stream down there. So the really neat thing is we're going to put uh, a handle in these axes that came from ash trees that grew right on the farm. So uh, anyways, that's pretty neat for people that are into nostalgia and, and uh, you know, things like that. It is kind of cool to have a, an axe handle from your own woodlot. So I want to show you taking this up. So... So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove uh, this wedge and and I know if you're like me a lot of times you <laughs> you can't bother going back through somebody's umpteen hundred videos to find out the one where they actually did a few things so I'm going to do it here again for you so you can watch it so typically what I do is I'll take my drill and I'll drill out uh, the wooden wedge and then pop all those pieces out well there's there's a ton of metal in this <laughs> so that's not going to work so what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to set that in my vise like this, and I'm going to take my drift, my axe drift, it came from two Atali axes and saws down in Masterton, New Zealand, and I'm going to try to punch this out of here. So my hope is it's just going to start moving, which may not happen. Okay, so it's, it's budged a little bit. You can see that it's it's budged out here a little bit. And it may be enough that we can start working on some of these some of these wedges. Um, so we're just gonna take a pair of pliers and try to Okay, it doesn't work either. Okay. And I'm doing this and <laughs> again. Obviously Kent and Lorraine didn't do this here, but the, the old farmers back in the day, of course, they're working around the farm They got things on the go. They ain't got time to go in and make a, a wooden wedge or something They grabbed what they could and they stuck it in there and made it work and and it worked really good because it's still in there really tight But uh, I want to show well, let's just take a look and see what's in there So I think Kent and Lorraine will find it interesting to see what what's in here for wedges so we're gonna fasten in the bench Vice because it's uh, she's giving us a little bit of grief Ugh. okay so hopefully now we can get a little bit of a pry on some of these and see if we can't knock them out okay um, it's kind of interesting this one here it's not we thought we knew what it was not convinced yet we, we know okay there we go so it is it's an old horseshoe nail so Kent, Kent was right on this one there it is you can see it bent over so hopefully we can get on the end of it there we go and pry it up out of here there we go so there it is so th so that was made now that's nostalgia there for you so that's a horseshoe nail and it's out. That's one piece. Now there's a, it looks like another one back here, but this this piece here is different. And it's uh, it's some piece of metal. 
I'm not sure 100% yet what it is, but we're going to try to try to pop it out of there. It's pretty, pretty tough, pretty tight in there. I'll tell you, it works out good. It's been, it's been my screwdriver. Let's try this other one here. There's another nail right here, and I think, any luck at all, we can probably pry this one out. We, what, the biggest thing you want to do is give yourself a little bit more wiggle room in there to start moving stuff. There it is, it's starting again. Once things start moving, that's usually everything else starts loosening up, and then things come a lot easier. So that's that's the goal here right now is to keep loosening things up in this end and seeing if we can't pry those out of there. So again, if you do much of this stuff, you're going to see everything, especially if you're buying stuff at yard sales and wherever else you can find, you know, axe heads. You're going to, you know, you're going to get stuff from every, every place and all kinds of different ways of doing things. And so you got to be able to improvise to make things work okay so now we're getting we're getting a lot more wiggle room here right now so <laughs> reminds me of taking teeth out being a dentist even though I've never done it but here we go here trying to get a hold of this one and pry it out so sometimes if you can hang on to it and just start tapping it it'll because it's tapered there see that where it's tapered once you start it coming and that is another horseshoe nail okay comes to a point so there's two of those out now did we get enough wiggle room to get this third piece of metal out so it's it's quite a wedge this third piece i'm not sure 100 percent what it is but it's uh it's substantial I'm just kind of breaking off wood here. The wood is pretty brittle. The handle was old. I'm not sure how long this sat around in a barn or basement or wherever, but so I'm just taking bits and pieces of wood out from all around this other piece of metal here. Because at one time there had to be a, a wooden wedge in there. So if we can get enough stuff loose around it, usually it'll come. Okay, there, now I can see, I can see uh, wood away from the hole around it. Boys, but it's pretty substantial. Which means it's a big piece of steel, okay? So we're dealing with a fairly big piece of steel here. That's what I'm saying, I guess. You know, we're getting almost everything worked away from it. Gotta watch your toes sometimes. East Coast Lumberjack gets thrashing around here. Never know what's going to fall from the bench. Biggest worry is one of them big axes falling. <laughs> Lopping off the end of your toe. Okay, so things are still pretty tight here. Um, it would be nice to try this again. See if it won't start prying yet. Oh, there we go. She started coming there. There we go. There we go, Kent. We're going to see what it is now. Pretty soon here. There we go. Well, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so, I figured that's what this was. Now, being an old firm, the perfect shape wedge back in the day, if you remember the old uh, the hay, hay uh, mowers that used to mow hay, and they had all the triangle shaped teeth, well, those triangles are the perfect shape for a wedge. So it's got a little bit of serrated edges on it, but that's exactly what that is. That's a tooth off of a cutter bar from an old uh, hay rake. 
which is pound in there to keep <laughs> keep her on and it worked really good because it's it's still there so i think we've got enough of the wood out of here now that if we take us our smaller wedge or uh drift and that's just a a railway an old railway uh spike it actually works great And the good, biggest thing is it's got that little lip on it. So you can bring her back out if you need to. <coughs> Come on. There we go. So that's coming out of there. See if we can start the rest of this. There she goes. Now the only thing about that is the spike's a little tight. Okay, so we're right down on the bottom of the vise. So we'll just loosen it up here. See that? So, what was that? 10 minutes. So a little bit of freaking and farting to get those out, but now we've got a clean eye and we're all set. So we know we have so this is like a Campbell's or a, you know, an old pole axe with the hammer in the end of it. So the best handle for those, and they're pole axes, is the Hetherington pattern I have. It's, it's a nice small Fonz put down here. It fits your hand beautifully. And it's about 28 inches long. So it's really a perfect pole axe size handle. So turn you around here. Here's the... Two pieces of wood we have so we're just going to lay them down the handles and get our marker now the good thing i will i will mention this not a little trick from the east coast lumberjack when hickory wood is drying it checks a lot at the ends because it's a very dense wood and the water comes out of it fairly quickly it'll cause a little uh, checks on the very end of the wood so always check the end of your wood to make sure you don't have a check there that's going to actually come up on this part of your handle okay because that piece will just split right off of there so i usually always look now ash i usually never have to worry about those checks on ash because it dries so nicely so i'm just going to lay that on there my 28 inch handle and because those heads are a little bit bigger i'm gonna i'm gonna trace around it and make it a little bit bigger so as i'm tracing this axe handle i'm gonna stand the marker up pretty straight and of course, because of the shape of the marker, it's going to actually give me an extra couple of centimeters on each side of the handle. Okay, so there's that one. And I usually leave, I leave a little bit at the top so you can hang it proud. So there's my, there's my pattern all drawn out. Okay, for that one. We'll do the same for this other one. Now, I've got a, I've got a couple little things in this. Of course, this one here didn't split out really straight. I've got a big bulb here at the end. You can see that bulbed out there at the end. And it's fairly flat here and a nice size down here for, for a, a palm swell. So I take as much as I can, I take full use or advantage of little things like that in my wood. So I know I've got a big flare at the bottom. So I'm gonna put my palm swell down there right on top of it. And I'm going to lay it here because, of course, I know it gets narrow up where I want the eye. And I only need about three quarters of an inch of wood up there. So I'm going to draw that out. And same thing, I'm just going to go around it. So it fits perfectly on this piece of wood. And then we'll do the top of it here. And leave myself, again, about an inch at the top for... Uh, a proud hang. So there the handles are all drawn out. So there it is there. So it's got a little bit of a wiggle in the bark. Remember I've told you that before. If your handle wood doesn't split really straight so it's flat the whole way along here and you can tell when it's flat here it's crooked there. When I flatten it on your end it's it's slanted down here. So I need to be aware of that and what I'll do when I'm running that through the bandsaw is I'll hold my piece of wood so it's flat here because I can see this. I can't see what's happening down there. So as long as I hold it flat here, when I run that through the bandsaw, you can see it's going to be lifted up a little bit on this end and I'll just hold it tightly with my hand 
with that upright so it's not even touching my bandsaw table there so I know that it's going to come straight the whole way down to the bottom part of this handle. Another trick from the East Coast Lumberjack when you're making a handle. Okay, so I think I can whip these out fairly quickly. We're at 15 minutes. So let me just put my stuff on and bear with me. I, maybe what, what I'll do is I'll do this in two parts. So that's the first part of the hang, the uh, Kent Allen hang. That's getting the, uh, the wedges out. It's drawing the pattern. So now it's just over here on the bandsaw. I'll be monkeying around here for five, 10 minutes, and then I'll shape them out and put them in. Okay, so uh, let's just, if, if you want to end it here, you can. <laughs> and what I'll do is I'll turn it around this way so you can watch me in the bandsaw. I'll cut these two out. Um, have, actually, once I do the, the upside, uh, the sideways profile, then I bring it over here, and I wanna, I'll show you a couple of neat things to do here to make sure your handle is straight. Okay, so bear with me. We'll be about five minutes on the bandsaw, and we'll be right back with a couple other pointers on how to uh, on how to make sure your handle stays straight. So the first thing I do is cut the length. Couple things, couple tricks. So all I did was lay that down. I cut out the profile on the sides. Okay, and this is good. I'm only going to do one handle at a time, so that way it's a lot less. You don't have to watch me on that thing very long. Okay. So what I did is I mentioned I held it so that it was flat on this end, so that end was stuck stuck up. And you can see right here it wasn't touching the bandsaw, but I held it really straight, ran it through there. So now you can see my sides are parallel. Okay, they're nice and parallel on each side. Because now I'm going to lay it this way to draw my next, my backside profile. Now the key when you're doing this is when you're laying that on the bandsaw, this angle here and the bottom here have to be level. You can't have one at this end this way and the other one tipped a little bit the other way. Because as you're running that down through the bandsaw, it's going to rock like this. So it's, it's going to flop over. So what that means is your sides of your handle are, are not going to be straight. They're going to, they're going to be crooked. So you've always got to make sure when you cut this off, where your handle is, your flare, make sure this 
is parallel with that. And see how they are parallel right here with that end there? That's what you want. So when I'm running the back side of this handle down, the other profile, when I lay it like this, it's going to be straight. So I'll lay that on my bench, and I can tell if it's straight, it's nice and tight. If it's crooked, it'll go flop, 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 flop. It'll go back and forth from one end to the other. So then I take my next straight edge, and this is just a piece of hardwood flooring. I lay it right here. It's about three quarters of an inches wide, which is what most of our handles are. And then I use, wherever it is, right there, I use a carpenter's pencil. And the reason I use a carpenter's pencil is it's flat on the side, so I can lay that flat against the side of my hardwood flooring. And as long as I draw that line straight down there, it's going to give me a nice straight line from top to bottom. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Put that on there, run it straight down this side, and turn around and run it straight down the other side. Okay. So there's almost about an inch wide profile. Now the other thing, remember because our because our handle, we've got bark coming in here. This is going to come straight down like this. So we're actually going to get into the bark here. Okay, you see that because it's such a slope. So what I need to do is I need to move my whole pattern over this way just a little bit. <coughs> So that I don't get bark on that inside sweep on the eye. So that's not a problem. I'm going to lay it out here a little bit more so that when I come straight down there, <clears throat> I'm not going to have bark. So that's that side. And I use I do a little bit darker line so I'll be able to follow it well. So a nice dark line that way. So there, now you can see, you can almost see two railway tracks here, okay? But I'm going to use the inside line because it brings me down, and it'll bring it down here, and we'll miss that lack of bark. Okay, now we know the eye at the top always comes in anyhow, it's teardrop shaped, so when I bring that in, it's actually going to be fine on that. So that is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'll do the two sides of this, and then we'll finish it up. So I'll do that on the next video because I know <laughs> my camera's almost out of battery power too. So we'll do that, come back, and part number two will be finishing the axe handle, the sides, and then shaping it and hanging it.